Hey everyone, this is the screen I was on when I decided I needed to share this tech. In the AI art space, there's different forms of animation depending on how it's put together. There was a group named Deform that put together a form of animation that grew to be very popular. If you've seen AI-based animations, chances are you've seen Deform-based animation. Anyway, I say all that to say it looks like a new project popped up on their GitHub repository, an extension for Automatic 1111, and what we have here is a basic text-to-video generator. So this video is going to cover how to add that. It's a really easy install, and honestly, there's not a lot to cover because it's still very, very basic. I also should warn you, it's not great yet. I'm going to show you some cool stuff, but most of what it makes is very unpredictable, very weird. Following the instructions, I had to download a specific set of models, so I wasn't able to use the ones that I've created. Couldn't use my embeddings, my hyper networks. Through different forms of training, I'd gotten used to putting in very short prompts, and this was a blast from the past in that regard where I had to put in these very long, complex prompts to get anything of substance. And sometimes these models didn't really seem to have sensible output. For example, I got nothing but chaos with the word hamburger, but it had no problem finding Pikachu. And I got really, really creepy versions of Pikachu, which was a bonus. And you remember my lobe video? Get a lobe of this. For the record, there's a lot of people who still believe lobe is real. These are way worse. The models this thing uses were clearly trained on a lot of Shutterstock-based stock photos, because that logo is almost immutable on a lot of the output. And so that's a major annoyance. And the last big thing I do want to talk about before we jump into installing it is the VRAM requirements. Now, I have a 3080 Ti, so I'm able to use 12 gigs of video RAM. It looks like this thing can be run on less, but it's not really great right now for that. This only works semi-decently at that range, but it looks like very soon they should be making this a little bit more accessible, based on what I read. Alright, so the install process, you can do it in a couple of different ways. What you're going to want to do is click on the Extensions tab, Install from URL, and then the URL for the Extensions Git repository, you're just going to grab that from the description below. Now optionally, if you have the GitHub desktop application, you can also clone the repository there. You just want to clone it into your Extensions folder. And if that part sounded too complicated, try the first method. It's a lot easier. Once the extension is actually installed, I'd recommend just closing Stable Diffusion, reopening it, and when you reload it, you'll see a tab that says Model Scope Text to Video. Inside that tab, you're going to see little other tabs, and then this is one of those other tabs, and it gives you more instructions. You want to follow that very first link and download the two path files, the bin file and the JSON file. Just click on the little arrows here that I highlighted, and they should just download for you right away. The instructions on the screen show you exactly where to drop them. It's inside your models folder and you will have to create a couple of subdirectories. But that's really all the setup you have to do to get this thing running. And beyond that, there's not a lot of tweaking to do afterwards. You're going to find yourself pretty limited in terms of tools that influence biases. Like I mentioned earlier, you can't really use LoRa's or hyper networks, anything like that. What you're seeing seems very repetitious because I was only able to get about 35 frames or so before I myself ran out of VRAM. And I will say that most of the good looking stuff, you do need a lot of sampling steps. But those are really the only tips that I can give you. But as this project updates, I'm hoping to see some really cool stuff. If there's less VRAM requirements, it's going to make it a lot easier to have lengthier videos or maybe more complex ideas. I'm really looking forward to being able to use different models, though. That could really open this thing up. In the meantime, while we wait for updates, I'll just continue to generate these really insanely creepy graphics. I know this video was both quick and unexpected, but I do hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please let me know if you did or you want to see more like this with likes, comments, all that good algorithm stuff. And as always, thanks for watching.